Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Um, we're going to continue our study in the book of Judges and uh, finish off chapter eight. And uh, But before we do, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you uh, for this morning, for the opportunity we have to open your word together. Um, we know, Lord, we need your presence every hour and every moment. And we pray for each one who has been a part of the studies and continues to be so. And those that watch these online and um, those that join occasionally and, and those that have um, been in this movement, and those that are in this movement. We know, Lord, there is many distractions out there and we see our own failings. We know, Lord, that um, we many times have to kneel in prayer and confession for our blindness, for our failures, for our sin. And uh, we ask for your forgiveness now. We pray for one another. We ask, Lord, that, uh, that these studies, that these are not just intellectual exercises, but that there's something to help us to see ourselves, that these are a mirror, not just in a chronological sense, but just as the law is a mirror and uh, as Christ is a mirror, that perfect law of liberty. Help us to see ourselves as we re really are and not forget what manner of man we were uh, when we step away from that mirror. Help, it, help, help us to keep Christ and him crucified always before us and to take up our cross daily. Be with us in this study now in the book of Judges. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone, again. Now, <clears throat> uh, an interesting point that is not related to this study, but um, related somewhat to the study that we had. On Friday night, we had done a study in A.T. Jones. And he addressed Revelation 17. And it was interesting last night in Colin's study that this guy, um, his name, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, Mwam, Mwamiko, because it's N-W-A-M-I-K-O. Madden, he was an actor. And he, I guess, works for the Alberta Conference or has worked for them recently. Uh, he's been interviewed on It Is Written Canada. Hope Channel has interviewed him. Um, and he presented a study on Revelation 17. Now, it wasn't quite what uh, we teach in this movement. So I'm not sure particularly why Colin had him leading out. There was no explanation when I was there of why he was there and why he was leading out. Um, very good presentation from a delivery point of view. He had uh, sort of a PowerPoint type of thing. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting how he did it because you could see him transparently through the slides. Um, but uh, um, some of his ideas were interesting, but I wouldn't say necessarily correct, though. Anytime somebody presents something, I always try to take a look at it and see if there's something, even if they have some error, if there's something there that um, they have noticed that I hadn't noticed. And he was making a comparison between the woman at the well and um, uh, Revelation 17 with the five are fallen. She says, I had five husbands, right? Or, you know, Jesus says, you've had five husbands. The one you're with now is not your husband. And he made the implication that the seventh is Christ, that he's now going to be the husband. And uh, in that spiritual sense. Um, and so he compared that to the seven heads of Revelation and um, saying that the seventh is the Antichrist. So, so he had the, the sixth as the United States, but he had the seventh as the Antichrist. So he didn't, didn't really have the UN in there. Um, and I, didn't, I wasn't around long enough to see what he did with the eighth, with the riddle, whether he addressed the riddle or not. And so I didn't see the discussion. But, but he's obviously not in this movement. Um, so it was kind of interesting in that, that sense. 
Now, um, also, you know, we have the date uh, yesterday was 520. Now, I guess there are some symbols there. And um, one of the symbols of 520 is its relationship to the 490. Right? People are aware of what I'm talking about? I think you might want to explain that. Well, 52 days and 49 days. All right. Right? We, when we did the study on the three days. So you can see how 52 is related to 49. Right, the 52 days in which they built the streets and walls. Okay, I've got three it. days separated out, right? So, so there's something there. But whether yesterday the 520 had an application or may have an application in the future, I do not know. Now, I was also watching uh, Colin's study, and, and he is bringing up this date that he has that's February 10th, um, 2024. So he's looking at this future date let me see if i can find this here um now this date um i didn't write down exactly what he connects it to i think it has to do with uh december uh 21st um or 25th pardon me mm -hmm. 2021. Um, yeah, so it's it's 777 days, December 25th, 2021. Yeah, William? Did you have a comment? Or somebody have a comment? My apology. I think my mic was on when I thought it was off. Oh, okay. So, um, so this is kind of interesting. Um, in the context of what I talked about on Thursday. So, um, I'm gonna show you this here. So, <clears throat> so this is just uh, some of these dates that I put up. So there is uh, uh, May 13th, 19, uh, 53, that's when my brother Dave was born. And and he's going to die. He's going to be killed by a drunk driver on October 13th, 1990. So you can see it's 13,667 days from when he was born. So that's how many days he lived. And, and you can see there I put December 25th, uh, 2021. So that's going to be um, 11,396 days since he had passed away. And then you see... Uh, Angela, his wife, uh, dies on May 13th, uh, 2023. Now, I'm uncertain whether my brother was actually born May 13th or May 17th, because I've always got that confused. So if he was born May 13th, then she died on his 70th birthday. If he was born May 17th, then that would have been four days before his 70th birthday. So I'm not sure. And I kind of think it was May 13th, uh, 1953, but I'm not 100% certain. So I'm going to try to find that out. Uh, but the point is, from the time that he died, uh, it brings us to this May 13th, 2023 date. Now, we will note that that date is 504 days um, after December 25th, 2021. And... Um, this date that Colin has, which is 777 days after December 25th, 2021, is 273 days after my sister-in-law, Angela, passed away. And um, so the 273, we have that symbol of March. Uh, um, March... Uh, March uh, 27th. Now, we also know that if we count back from here, from this date, so here, I'll shrink this down a bit. Um, so from the date that she died, we had noted this, right? That brings us to March 27th, 2021, 
Okay. Now, to understand uh, this a little bit more, um, I also have another date in the future. And what I did was simply, um, I took one tenth of 11,900. So that's 1,190 days. Now, 1,190 days is the difference between uh, 391 years, which is 142,810 days, and 144,000 days, right? So 1,190 days is part of that structure that we had with the Mayan calendar. And it brings us to August 15th, 2026. Now, um, this date here, or this number here, 917, from the date Colin has, does anybody know the significance of 917 that we've seen recently, what that is? Um, I see it. I, I see that, but I'm transposing the numbers as being July 19th. Yeah, it can be July 19th, right? And and the thing is, we saw this already, though. Um, though it may not be uh, uh, evident to everyone that we saw this. Now, this had to do with Stephen's diagram. So he had done this diagram. Uh, let me see if I can find it quickly. Um, oh, that's why this one. Um, that was that long ago. Eh? So I'll show you this diagram. <clears throat> Is this it? Um, yes. So what are we looking at here? What is this diagram? So this is the captivity of Jehoiachin, 597. It's 140 years to Artaxerxes decree. And, and then we have the 777 years from Artaxerxes' decree to the Sunday law of Constantine. And, and, and this gives us a structure from the destruction of Jerusalem, which is 666 years from the captivity of Jehoiachin. So we have 14251, and they add together to be 391, right? Agreed. Now, in the center... Uh, the symbol here is there's 586 years, right? But from Artaxerxes to agree to destruction of Jerusalem. And we know Jerusalem was destroyed the first time in 586 BC, right? So, so that isn't put in the diagram. But if you add 70 AD to 457, you get 586. Right? Am I doing right. that right? Um, yeah, yeah, 586. I think I'm doing that right. I just, just making sure. 457 plus oh, 526. Oh, I'm supposed to, to add it to. Uh, no, it's 526, not 586. So the, the symbol of this date, 526, um, there was something else about this. Anyway, the point is, when we add the whole thing together, so it's not 586, it's 526. But when we add it together, 526 plus 251 plus 140, what do we get? 917. 917, right? So this whole line is 917. And um, so the 917 relates to this line. So 
So it's part, and it's also related to the 777, right? As we can see in when we go back to this diagram here. So there is some structure here that we need to, uh, to understand how this relates. Now, these are symbolic events. So what's the symbolism of, of October 13th? Um, the day my brother dies is October 13th. So what's the symbolism of that? 8.13. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's 8.13 just because October can be 8, right? Right. It originally was the eighth month of the year not the 10th month. Um, and we know that that is also um, the fall of Babylon, October 13th, uh, 539. And it's also the miracle of Fatima. And of course, October 13th, 2018, is when we calculate the 391 and a half. Right? So we can see how that relates. Now, now the symbol of of a person dying, so my brother dying on October 13th, 1990, what would the symbol of that be? I mean, obviously this is something in my personal life. But that is a probation. Okay, so somebody dying is a close of probation symbol, right? All right. Okay. Um, anything else? Now, it's, it's also interesting that October 13th, 1990 is the 23rd day of the seventh month on the biblical calendar. So that's 723, right? It's also March 27th if you go the other way. So you've got 723 B.C. If you arrange the numbers, you got two, seven, three. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or that's what I'm saying. March uh, 27. Right. So, yeah. So we have this. So Hoshea's captivity or the beginning of the 2520 for northern Israel. Right. So so we have this symbol. Now, it exists in somebody's life. Um, so we have Angel has Judges 917. Right. So that's going to be later. And so 917 becomes a symbol. Now, the thing about these numbers and these symbols, and the reason I bring them up is because we have lots of numbers that are symbols. And, and now you can't have every number be a symbol. But what we normally have when we have a line and we have a date is that we have often more than one symbol being represented. Right. So here we have October 13th and the 23rd day of the seventh month. Now, we know that that 777 days before November 9th. Is going to is going to be on September 23rd, again, September being seven, 723. And we know that uh, in 1844, September 23rd is. Um, uh, that date that would have been the Day of Atonement if you had the wrong biblical calendar, so that the Jews observed September 23rd. And Ellen White, seven years later, has an article that's actually written on October 23rd, but is shown as being written September 23rd in early writings. And because it was originally published that way, it was a typo that ended up uh, being repeated. And so we know it was actually October 23rd she had that, that the Lord showed her that he must, must reach out his hand the second time to gather his people, however the, the phrase goes. Um, so we see these types of things here. We see these types of symbols. And uh, they're also part of a structure that is when we look at October 13th, 1990, I mean, to me, before it was just the date my brother died, and it was a symbol of 
you know, that that was part of, of biblical history and prophetic history and became a part of this movement that date October 13th. Um, but then we had Colin with this date of February 10th. And, and it's simply just he's counting 777 days from December 25th, 2021. So, I mean, we've all probably tried this. Who's ever tried this calendar converted to see well, what's the next 777 days? Where is it going to end up? And it ends up on this date, right? But the fact that it happens to be uh, uh, 504 days um, uh, that we're going to have from when my brother's wife dies, Angela, which is just like Angela here, an angel, right? Um, that it's going to be 504. So we know that 273 and 504 make 777. And, and that same thing occurred in my line with the mind calendar. That is, I counted from the mind calendar when it gets to 13000, the world's supposed to end, and I count 777 days. And I get to my 52nd birthday. Now, so 52, 520, which was yesterday, March or May 20th, right? So it's the fifth 20, the 520, the fifth month, 20th day, uh, relates to 52, right? So that's one of the symbols we have for it. It's also, uh, um, you know, as we said, it, it relates to. Um, the story of Ezra to 52 days and 49 days, and we looked at it in other places. So, so we had that date yesterday in which these things were discussed. Um, but anyway, going back to my line, we have that 777 days. Now, that goes to my 52nd birthday, but if I count 52 times 360, which is the Mayan calendar year, it's going to bring me to May 9th, uh, not, uh, it, well, in 20, uh, uh, 2014. So it's going to be, um, that would have been my 33rd wedding anniversary. So Angela, who died, was my first wife's sister. So two brothers married two sisters. So, so Angela, my sister-in-law, through my marriage, to Levine and also my sister-in-law through my brother's marriage to her. Yeah, question? No, I'm <clears throat> I'm going to give an offhand comment just looking at some numbers here. Yeah. It's interesting to me when we're looking at the shaded progression where you've got on 25th of December of 2021 273 followed by 777. Yeah. And then on the following date, on the 25th, as, excuse, excuse me, I, I had the wrong initial date. So you're going 327 of 2021 with the 273 and the 777. And then you've got the 1225 of 2021 with the 504 and the 777. Yeah. And then you've got on... <clears throat> 10th of February, or sorry, 513 of 2023, you have the 273 with the 1190. Now, what, what was what's intriguing to me as you were pointing this out, the 273 and the 504 additively give us the 777. Right, because we have 252 days from November 9th to July 18th, and then 252 days from July 18th to March uh, 27th, 2021, and then 273 days to December 25th, 2021, right? So right. Well, now, I can probably put those dates in here, and you can kind of see how this is like a matrix of all of these 777s. Well, what, what I'm looking at in this, in the, in the symbolism. Yeah. We have applied the 273 as being a an example or a symbol of the Levites, right? 
that's the Adventist church. Those are the ones that are to re we're preparing the message for them. Okay. Now, 504 has come up several times in other studies that I've been doing. And I find it interesting because if you take 504 and multiply that by the number five, you come out with the number 2520. Right. So we know that from 34 AD, so the time when uh, pagan Rome persecutes Christians, starting with the crucifixion, uh, with the, um, pardon me, the close of probation for the Jewish nation, right? So spiritual Israel is now going to be persecuted by Rome, right? Correct. And that's 504 years to 538, right? That's two times 252. And Correct. of course, 1260 is uh, five times 252, right? So altogether, that's from 34 AD to 1798, seven times 252, uh, 16... Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, yeah, 13, uh, 1764 years. Right? So <clears throat> I'm looking at 777 as being a trumpet, giving us a, a warning message because 504 multiplied by five, could that also not be applied of being uh, a symbol of the 2520, but multiplied by the five wise virgins. Yeah, well, you could do that. But, but specifically, because 504 shows up in, in the persecution of pagan Rome on Christians. Right. 1260 is papal Rome on Christians. It, it shows a transition. So it's part of a bigger structure. It's a part of seven times 252 structure. Right, the 16, uh, uh, 1764 uh, number. So, so 504 right. shows up. It's also the fifth day of the fourth month as a symbol. Right. So that's Ezekiel prophesied at midnight. So it becomes a midnight symbol as well. Now, see, part of the thing that happened when um, Dan van der Horst started doing this, he started taking spans of time that we already had within that 7-7 seven, seven, seven structure and extending them past December 25th, 2021. And when he was doing that, um, what, I, what I said is you can do that because those dates are symbolically connected to our line. It, it sort, of, sort of affirms um, our line, that our line is correct. But to predict what events are going to happen See, part of what I see is that, that we have time in this movement, but this time is meant to tell us something about our movement, that is, it's light for our feet. Because God is not so much trying to tell us what is going to happen when, right? That is, we don't need to know exactly when what is going to happen, because we know what is going to happen. I mean, he's showing us that, but not what is going to happen when. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not putting the two together. He's trying to show us what is going to happen, but not right. when. And, and so light for our feet gives us an idea of what is happening, what to watch for, so that we know not to stumble. So these are warnings for this movement to understand um, symbolically where we are in these lines so that we can discern what is true and what is false. Because it's not that easy in the sense God has given us this information because there are the, the track of error lies close to the track of truth. And we see that when we get into uh, the ephod, right? Gideon's ephod. We know that this represents this chronology. But it's a misuse of this chronology. So when I was looking at Colin's study yesterday, um, the one thing I can say is his dates are correct. But we can see, based on how we have been studying these lines, what God has shown us on how to discern or sort out these dates, 
We need Millerite history to do that. Because we can, we can just start using these symbolic numbers and we see, well, this creates this matrix of dates that are all interconnected. But the question is, what do they mean? Right? What, what are they indicating for us? That is, I think, the most relevant point. Now, when we look at this, um, this date here where, when my sister-in-law Angela passes away, um, and I understand it's from a stroke, and a stroke is a symbol, right? What, what does a stroke symbolize? Some would say a judgment of God. Yeah, it's taken as a judgment of God, right? That's that's how we would look at it. It's does that make sense to people? I mean, that's why it's the word stroke. They were struck by God, right? Because people in the past, it was sort of inexplicable. Somebody just dies, right? Just drops dead. So this is a stroke. It's a judgment of God. Um, does that make sense to people? Now, it's a woman who receives a stroke. So what would this be symbolizing, right? Because we see since March 27th, 2021, we have 777 days. Would it be a judgment at a church? Well, this is obviously not a judgment of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Right? But it's a judgment of a church. Now, now this is relating to March 27th, which is a message to the Levites. You know, so Colin has looked at the 777 days from December 25th, 2021. But he hasn't looked at the 777 days from March 27th, 2021. And if we look at what that is telling us, um, I think it's telling us things that we maybe don't want to hear. Because this is a negative message. Because we were given the 777-day structure to December 25th, 2021. But if we start to build this ephod beyond that, and, and we can still use the symbols. Like, there's no contradiction for us to look at these symbols. But the thing is, we can then interpret them based on what has happened. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So for this movement, we can see that the death of Angela, my sister-in-law, even though it's it's not a worldwide event. It is connected symbolically to our lives. Right? And it's connected to October 13th as a symbol. Right? With that 11,900 days. So, so this is telling us something about what we can do with time that we have to be quite cautious that we can get caught up in these times and these dates to believe it's telling us something that it's not telling us that is we need to clearly understand how symbols relate within a line that is a line is a seven point structure that is based upon a three-step testing prophetic message that has a specific period of darkness, has specific messages, and um, that these messages um, are doing a specific work within this movement, right? Because that's all the lines can tell us about when it comes to these dates. We're looking at something happening within this movement. Okay, now. Yeah, there, there have been two comments in the chat that have been kind of interesting. Yeah. First, the first one is noted that 
the venerated Pope John Paul II was shot by a Muslim on the 13th of May, 1981. Right. And the other was giving a notation about the current president of the General Conference being born on the 10th of May of 1950. Yeah. And that the 10th day of the fifth month is a symbol of destruction. Yes. So that's obviously the, the destruction of, of uh, Jerusalem on the 10th day of the fifth month. Yeah. Three days before the 13th day of the fifth month. Right. Right. So, yeah. So we, we can see that that symbol is relevant. And Ted Wilson is relevant. Now, the, the hard part is taking things like, you know, my brother's death and my sister-in-law's death as having something to do with the lines. But the thing is, they are symbolic dates, right? And, and they fit within the structure. So that is, you know, if, if my brother had died on some unimportant date and symbol-wise, and my sister-in-law had died that many days, later, 11,900 days later, but it didn't fit in our lines, that would be a curiosity, right? So the only reason why these are meaningful is because these are already marked by our lines, correct? Agreed. Right? Now, now if we didn't have my sister-in-law dying on May 13th, we would still have May 13th, Right, we would still have that 777 days from March 27th, 2021. Right, Correct. so we still have it. We just wouldn't have any event to help us understand the symbol. Does that make sense? It's logical. Now, if we try to project what an event is going to be because we can create these symbols. We can create 777 days after December 25th, 2021 as Colin did. We can say, well, that's February 2nd. And it's part of this structure, right? Now it's, it's part of this structure that um, we see more of it than Colin does because we've looked at these lines and understood the, the interactions between these lines. But we couldn't say, that that date, we couldn't predict what's going to happen on that date. But after that date, we might find an event that is significant symbolically. Right? Because if we had projected, you know, um, uh, May 13th, 2023, we measured the 777 days and we said, well, we have this date here in the future and... Um, so now we're going to, to look at that date and uh, we're going to decide what it is uh, beforehand. It might be this, it might be that. And, but that would be guessing, right? We can't know events before they occur. Right. Okay. So, so this is an important part of understanding these numbers because I, I struggle with the fact that um, – Numbers can be deceptive. That is, you can play tricks with them. And if somebody doesn't understand what's happening with the number, um, they can see something as, ooh, that's really weird, you know, that that happened. But it can just be a trick of the math, right? Um, and then, of course, you know that if you take uh, dates and you repeat them like three years later, like Colin is doing, well, you're going to get the same structure three to three years later, aren't you? Right. Right. So, you know, it, it, it I mean, all of that structure is going to happen. So you so you know that, um, you know, if you do it one year later, well, you could take everything and move it one year later. And all of those same spans of times would occur you know, unless you have a leap year in there. Right. Um, so so these are important points to recognize. And, and then when we have these these dates uh, here, uh, we can start to see that and we have a date, you know, August 15th, 2026, midnight cry. 
it would be wrong to say that's going to be the midnight cry. The midnight cry is going to happen on August 15th, uh, 2026. Right? Because we can't know. But we can see that that's a symbolic date and that it's connected to this 777 days. That goes from March 27th, 2021 to May 13th, 2023. And, and we take this symbol of the 1190, and that 1190 comes from 11,900. And, and so you just, you know, you put it there and you see, oh, we got also the 917. And we already saw that in relation to the 777 that Stephen recognized. So, and so you just can't dismiss this but you can't draw conclusions just because you want to. You have to wait, right? That is, you, you have light for your feet and God is giving you light for your feet. And as we go through these events, we start to see the significance of these things. Now, the other thing uh, that we have that's important, right, which I mentioned before, is that we have these lines. These are part of these structures, and these structures come from Millerite history. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're going to finish off chapter eight, but we're gonna, actually going to have to go back to this because we have to look at the line of Abimelech and the line of um, Gideon and how these relate. So here we were. So we, we looked at these events in our movement. These, for the most part, are past events. And we could see the significance of these dates because we have this prophetic structure, a three-step testing prophetic message, right? Well-defined darkness, well-defined messages that are shown up in the book of Judges, in the Bible. So we're not just creating these lines out of our history. We're not just taking the lines in our history of events that happened, looking at the spans and seeing a structure and then extending that structure and then interpreting what's gonna happen next, right? I would think I'd have to agree. Yeah. So the one thing that troubled me was Gideon's ephod. And I believe that, that we're in that time, right? Okay, so Gideon's ephod meaning a, a a a span of time, not just an example. Right. That is, remember, Gideon didn't want to uh, become king, right? He he didn't accept being king, but he wanted to become a religious leader. Right. He wanted. He accepted being a priest, right, because of his rationale. That, okay, I can be a priest, and we're going to make this ephod. Now, Gideon is a message, not a person, right? And, and this is the message of July 18th. And so this message of July 18th had this whole structure. But if you take that structure and you make an ephod out of it, that is, if you continue to, to use these dates to sort of, uh, because the ephod is for discerning right making decisions well it's <clears throat> it's one of the roles okay it's one of the roles but is it also not a symbol of a direct connection to jehovah right so so what we see in in the movement presently is to me quite troubling or disturbing that is how how Colin is using these dates and these structures is not according to Miller's rules first, but the dates he has are correct, right? I mean, these are spans of time that we can look at and they're part of our structure. We're passing through them, but he, he, he guesses at their meaning, right? Is that one of Miller's rules that we guess at the meaning of something? Absolutely not. It's the opposite. We don't guess. 
right? We don't guess at the meaning of something. We have to be shown um, what something means. And if we guess and we guess wrong, that's dangerous, right? And so we saw this guessing and the guessing was wrong, but we still continue the guessing. It doesn't really make much sense to me, but, but that's what's happening. But we know that what's what was given, because there is light that was given from God, because Gideon's ephod is, is built from what? Linen. Well, but but it's it's more than that, right? Because he's going to have this um, uh, these ornaments, right? These tires of the moon that are off the camel's neck, right? And these earrings and all these different things, right? And these garments, and he's going to use that to make an ephod, right? Correct. Now, now, of course, we have Islam. We have the prophecy of Islam. We have that there. We have uh, all of these symbols here, because, and we're going to look at that in more detail as we go uh, through this, because I think this is an important part of understanding um, what this line is about. I know I should know this, but I'm yeah. going to ask it anyway. So the uh, ephod is made out of linen. I thought it was made out of brass. Well, there's different parts of it because it's 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 a like a jacket that goes over top. Okay. Oh. But it it has other things on it, right? So he's going to use the cloth and the golden earrings, and right because it's purple uh, purple raiment that was on the kings of the Midian besides the chains that were about their camel's necks, right? And he's going to make this ephod, and they're going to go whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Right? I must be thinking about the scent, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, there is ephods that are just linen. There's the linen ephod, and then there's the, the golden ephod. Okay. But there's the priest wears different garments depending on what he's doing right so he puts the linen ephod on on the day of atonement not the golden that's a whole other study but but the point is when i when i saw this i mean i could see that this is the message of july 18th the message of gideon and it's and he's going to make this ephod that's going to be the people are going to be whoring after, and it's going to become a snare, right? And we can see that that's what's happening with this chronology. Because we have to follow Miller's rules. We have to understand how these lines are laid out. And, and we don't seem to in this movement presently because most of the movement has not spent the time to first examine the foundation and then to go through and understand the lines. Now, another thing that, that Colin talked about, especially in the evening, but he talks about this a lot, you know, we need to examine things. We need to test them by the word of God. That's the standard in which things are tested, right? And of course, he's applying that to either what he's presenting, and he's going to apply it to what uh, um, what Miko is uh, presenting. But we would have to apply; he would have to apply that to what we're presenting as well, right? That you know, if you don't hear a man, you can't you can't make a judgment about what what he's saying is true or not. You have to test it. And that's not being done, right? So we know that's not according to Miller's rules. Lots of things come across my path every day to look at. And I test things, right? By the word of God, not by what I feel or what I already know and understand. And, and by that, we can be corrected. 
That is, we can see things that we didn't see before. And so God constantly shows us these things that we need to see. And he sometimes uses the most humblest of instruments. You know, if we ever have an attitude, well, who is that person? You know, God speaking through me. Who is that person? How is God speaking through them? We can never be taught of God. Right? So we have to recognize this. And it's not an easy thing to do. And we know that not everything we hear is going to be uh, true. Right? And some things are going to have truth mixed with error. So we need to be able to separate the precious and the vile. So when we look at this line here, just, um, and hopefully that's a good summary for people. I don't know if anybody has comments about that. Because there are things that we need to look at. I know Rosanna has presented some studies that we're going to look at. Um, and, uh, you know, other people have presented things that I've shared um, here in this study group. Um, but we're going to continue looking at these things. And, and God will have, the, have us look at them at the right time. That is, when he gives us light, he gives us light when we need it most. Sometimes he gives us light in advance, but, and it's important that he does that because sometimes if he hadn't given it to us in advance, it wouldn't be as meaningful. Right? So it doesn't mean as much when it's given in advance, but it makes it more meaningful when it, it then makes sense later. Does that make sense to people? <clears throat> okay, so. So when we look at this line, I just want to finish off this line a little bit. Um, remember we had the 1260 here. Right, December 6th, so 126. Right. And and we know that, that we can put the lampstand under these, right? Uh, February 16th, that has the same symbol, right? Right, it does. Okay. Now here it's 216. It's still a 126. But it's still a 126, yes. And um, it also ties us to Samuel Snow's letters as a symbol. Uh, but we can look at uh, here this um, this email exchange. So this is FFA giving their declaration, and this is um, uh, this email here is a type of separation as well. So this is the email that that the Canadian group puts out that uh, does not no longer gives the connection uh, for for our Zoom studies in the morning. Right. So we can see how those parallel each other. And 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 they're both, both 126s. But this is a 216 as well, which is six times six times six. But it still has that symbol. And then we can see in the middle is this 126 days. So you've got a 126 here divided as 77 and 49. And this is this story of Penuel and Sukkoth, which we went through. And we know that. They're flipped around here. You know, chronologically, these uh, show up first Sakuth and then Penuel. But, but they're still there. And, and we relate them to uh, the lack of support. So, so we can see that this structure is fine. Where we, where we get to um, here, this final date, that I have, which is January 11th. Now, of course, this is going to be in each of these lines. It's going to end up on these January 11th to 12th, 2023. Now, this is Judges 8.22, which is um, actually the golden ephod, right? Then the men of Israel. So we're going to look at this here. So, and this is what I think this line is showing, is that, the golden ephod, once we get to the end of Colin's prediction, January 11th, 2023, we then have this uh, golden ephod 
Gideon's ephod, right? That is now being used, okay? So this movement came to a point. They had this opportunity. And now they're going to choose to go ahead and still use something that was meant for something else. Right. So this, I, you know, what this gold and from the camels and from these um, uh, Midianites. Yeah. So uh, Jeff Pippinger's 621 warning to Nashville is FFA's uh, 12 6 in reverse. Yep. Yeah. And on 12 6 20, FFA spiritually reversed uh, Jeff Pippinger's teachings. That's what Angela's saying there. Right. So so it's just a note about the 621 and the 12 6. So that's just more about December 6th. But now. That's well stated. Yeah. Now, now we can see that this movement, uh, even with what happened with February 16th, with failing, deciding not to include because of that interaction in those 1260 days to not include links to our studies any longer on February 16th. We can see how that relates as a mirror as well, right? Agreed. Yeah. So now we're looking at this last way mark. So that's gonna be the second angel in power. And, and we're gonna look at these, this, this whole line again and just see how, how it fits in. But now we have Gideon's ephod. And so we're saying that this, this date is this January 11th. So when January 11th ends, the 65 days from uh, the election ends, right? And that 65 days is uh, four, uh, 46 and 19, right? So it's, it's the prophetic mirror. And Colin is saying, no, it's not those dates. It's the 46th president and the 19th president, right? That is the 19th being uh, Trump and the 46th being Joe Biden. Okay. So, but he doesn't want to put those as dates. I'm not sure why particularly, uh, because he doesn't have any problem putting other things as dates. But we saw that those dates are witnessed to with the symbols of July 18. And so they're valid dates. They're not just dates that we would ignore. Okay. So the men of Israel said unto Gideon, rule thou over us both, thou and thy son and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Now, we know that Midian represents strife. But this ephod here is, is going to be, well, first, they want Gideon, the message of July 18th, to rule over them forever, right? Now, do we believe that we're still going to continually have time and continually set dates until the second coming? No. No, we, we know we're not. But this is special within this movement. Now, in this case, I mean, this is when they're delivered from the hand of Midian. And, and so we would say here, well, we still have strife. But they might believe that they don't. Right. Because they often deny that there's any disunity in the movement. They say, you people are just the problem. Right. You're the ones who believe there's this disunity, but we're completely united. Right. And, and that's like the Adventist church. You know, I was at uh, Weber Church when they had one of their anniversaries and we had the Alberta Conference president and the treasurer and all these officials at our church. And. Uh, the, the conference president made a, a sermon where he talked about how come the Alberta conference is united. And it's united because we remove those who are, who cause disunity. Is that unity? No. <laughs> That's not the unity Christ prayed for. No, it's not. Not at all. No. Um, 
right? And of course, a lot of this was directed at me because they knew who I was. And uh, so it was directed at me. I mean, the, the idea is there's no reason that they would even say this except for the fact that I was there. But uh, be that as it may, we know that we can create unity by just removing people we don't agree with. And that's not what Christ asked. He wants us to be united, right? We're seeking to be united with those in this movement. They may not be wanting to be united with us, but we're seeking to be united with them because we believe in the prayer of Christ. You know, the last thing we want to see is people leaving because we pushed them out or mistreated them. We want people to be united, to be working together, right? That is um, to answer the prayer of Christ. That, that is our purpose, to come to the upper room, to see our sins. It's easy just to keep getting rid of the people you don't agree with and to feel that you're united, but eventually you'll just have the unity of one you'll be the last one left. And, and that's not really unity at all. all. Right. So to be united with those that, that are different, that, that, that you have problems with, that's true Christian unity. <clears throat> but they want Gideon to rule over them. Now, Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites, right? And they answered, we will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast, cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. Now, how do we understand this? That they are Ishmaelites. But we, we went through this before. But I mean, this is quite interesting. I mean, why, you know, why this is here in the Bible. I mean, we can see definitely it relates to um, this message. So the Zeb and Zalmunna, if you remember, are the messages uh, related to Odilo, Odilio's method, message and Colin's message, right? That's how we well, understand it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I, well when Abraham gave, gave the blessings, he's called called Islam is Ismail as a blessing and a curse. You don't you think that they he, they was being a blessing to um Gideon at the time? Well the Ishmaelites? Yeah. I, I don't know if they a blessing. They'd be more they're the enemy. But the thing is they're Midianites, but they say they're Ishmaelites. Why is that? How can Midianites be Ishmaelites. Well, they're related, but they're not really of, I mean, while they are sons of Ishmael, they are not a, they're not truly united in that, in that situation. They're just, they're blood relatives. Yeah. Well, they're blood relatives. I mean, in the sense that um, we know that, to... Right. So this is the son of Abraham by Keturah, right? The progenitor of the tribe of the Midianites or Arabians, right? So now Ishmael is not the son of Keturah, right? No. The... Keturah is the wife that he, he's going to be the son of um, um, the Keturah. Egyptian woman. Right. Yeah, but 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 Ishmael, what's what's his mother's name? Okay. What? I'm sorry, Theodore. I had it on. My wife was talking to me. Yeah, Ishmael. What what? It's it's uh, Sarai's handmaid. Does did they Agar. give it? Hagar. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Aram. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Hagar, right? So you got Hagar. So obviously. Uh, this idea that they're Ishmaelites is not necessarily directly that they're descendants of Ishmael, but they live in that territory, 
right? Right. Okay. So, and the idea of an Ishmaelite would be this, basically the type of worship that they have as well. That there's some connection there. But the thing is, they didn't need to say that. I mean, the Bible, you know, they could, if you had left that sentence out, for most people, it would have been just fine. But we have Ishmael mentioned here for a reason. Because this is a message regarding Islam, right? July 8th is a message regarding Islam. Now, so when I first looked at this, I was... I don't know. I was, I was puzzled. I was trying to say, well, how does this relate? How does Gideon's ephod relate? Because I said, well, what are we doing, you know, in setting any dates past December 25th, 2021? Maybe we're, we're, we're building Gideon's ephod or we're worshiping this ephod or making this ephod. Um, but now we can see quite clearly that there is some who are doing that, but not all of this is the same. Right? When we're looking at these dates, our purposes are different than the purposes that Colin has. How we how we lay out these dates, how we analyze them is different. And so we're not we're not building Gideon's ephod. We're not worshiping this ephod it's not a stumbling block right right we're not making these numbers and these dates in this chronology the priest by which we have connection to god we're using god's word so the numbers can be misused right this is this is the thing that has become very clear to me. and But the thing is, when they're misused, they're not fake numbers. They're, 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 those numbers are there. But, but they're misused. And so we have to be really careful about this. And, and so God has given us this opportunity to, to look at our chronology, our numbers, everything he's given us, through this window of the book of Judges. And what we're really examining is ourselves. Are we in the faith or not? And these are some difficult things that we've had to deal with. We've had to deal with differences within... Um, our group, right? Because we do have differences. And and do we act appropriately? You know, I've had to, you know, I tend to beat myself up every time I have a conflict with someone. doesn't matter how minor it is because I don't want to be the one that's in the wrong. I don't want to be acting incorrectly. And we all should be doing that. We should be examining ourselves. And we should never um, just dismiss light from somebody, even if they're annoying, even if there's somebody that we don't particularly like. And I've given examples of this in the past where people have presented things and I was like, hmm, I don't really like this person, but what they're saying is true. And I can't let my personal feelings about them interfere with with light that God wants to give me. And, and often it's that way because God wants us to be humbled in order to receive light. He's going to bring light to us in ways that are that go contrary to our nature. Okay, so now we have um, they answered, we willingly give. Now we can see here, in the Hebrew, this number is doubled. Now, this word, natan, means gift, a gift. Now, this word also shows up um, when, it, when you have the, the, the daily is taken away. So let's look there. 
I just want to see show you some of the uses of this word, Natan. Well, you can use it here in Daniel 11, verse 31. Um, uh, it says, um, an arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away, that is, uh, sir, which means to remove, the daily, right? And they shall place, that word place is Natan means a gift or to give. So they're going to give the abomination that make it desolate. Right? And then we see it also in 1211, right? From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, again, sir, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. That word set up is, again, just the word to give. Right now, of course, they translate it in in English so that the idiom makes sense. But, but we can see that that there this is going to be doubled in Judges chapter eight, verse twenty five. Right. So they translate it as we willingly give, we give give. We will willingly give give, or we will give give. And they spread a garment and did cast, cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. So, so can we see that this word is also set up? That it's set up how? Just like the abomination of desolation. All right. Right. Do you see the comparison that I'm making here? I'm not going to disagree. Right. So we take away the daily. We set up the abomination of death. So they're going to give, give. So this is an abomination, right? Isn't it? Yes. Okay, good. So this, this ephod is, is exactly like the abomination. Because it's replacing the ministry of the sanctuary. So, so we shouldn't ignore the fact that it's that same Hebrew word used in Daniel eleven thirty one, and twelve eleven. There, there's no coincidences in Scripture. Right now, there is coincidences in life, but none in Scripture. Agreed. <laughs> okay. Um. Now we had looked before at the weight of the gold earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside the ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings. Now, with the 1,700, 1,700, did we have any significance for that? Three twenty-one to, 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 to 2021. Oh, okay. Uh, what are you saying, Angela? I was just thinking of AD three two one with 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 oh, with the Sunday law twenty okay, so this, yeah so, okay that's I, I did I, I don't remember if we did that or not but that's 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 correct that's a, right that's a great point right and so do, as as a question do we have the time today to get further into this no. We don't. Yeah. And, and I'm just going a little bit over because we started a little bit late. No. Um, yeah. So I think we, we need to come back to this point here again uh, tomorrow. And um, I do have a funeral to go to today. today. Um, so, um, but I have to do some things before I, and I have some students to teach before that. But anyway, I, I want to say that I appreciate the study today. Um, now, we haven't, there's still lots we don't understand. But the one thing that we have understood in over, over the last week is that we need patience with each other. We need to seek God for answers. We need to be praying for one another. And 
um, that Satan is seeking to divide us and destroy us. And, and we can't allow that to happen. And the way we don't allow that to happen is by examining our own hearts. But these things that we are being shown here, and especially this, this 1700, I, I think becomes really significant if we relate it to all of these things that we just have talked about in this right. life. Because um, this ties it all together as far as being this, um, uh, the goal that is used to build this ephod. And, and, and I think this is quite remarkable. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful. Please be with us as we um, go throughout this day. We pray for each person. Um, we know that uh, many of us struggle uh, to understand these things and to apply these things to our lives. And we just ask that your Holy Spirit and angels can watch over each one. That you can help us to see our need and to confess our sins. And to not point out the sins of others, but to see what is in us that is hindering your truths. Forgive us, we pray, and be with us. May your angels watch over us. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.